I absolutely love it when a brand decides to make a watch that is supposed to pay tribute to a historical timepiece that had a certain significance in shaping the way we see watches today. I've said it numerous times that I'm not actually a big fan of vintage watches because they're fragile and you never know what you're gonna get when buying one. Now, that being said, that doesn't take away from the fact that they're actually pretty cool. Nowadays, brands like Vario, who are no strangers to making vintage-inspired watches with modern materials, are becoming well-known for their accurate reinterpretation and also for their build quality. Their latest release, the Vario 1945 World War II D12, actually Dirty Dozen field watch, it's not a wrap band, it's a watch for God's sakes. It's probably the best field watch for the price. Now, I know that's a bit of a bold statement and I say this quite often, but hear me out. First of all, we have to take in consideration the historical accuracy that Varia went for here. Now, I won't bore you to death with all the details of the requirements, plus I can only squeeze so much into this video before you guys stop listening to me. But the original Dirty Dozen watches had to have certain features to be the perfect soldier watch, whatever the hell that means, but it had a certain significance back then. I'll leave a link down below with an article to these requirements. Next to that, like and subscribe button. Please subscribe, it helps me out. So you can read more about it and you don't have to listen to me waffle on about it. Similarities between old and new start with the dimensions. The Vario case has a diameter of 37 millimeters, it has a thickness of 10.5, which is quite cool, but the movement helps. It has a lug width of 18 millimeters, a lug to lug of 45. Now, according to the internet, the original 12 varied in sizes, or the original dozen, dirty dozens. Now they varied in sizes between 35 and 38 millimeters and this sort of slots somewhere into the middle of those dimensions. Now to me, size-wise, this is pretty much in the sweet spot. Now I do prefer smaller watches and since I am below average in size, Yes, I am small. This for me is a match made in heaven. Well, the similarities kind of don't end there. The case finishing is also done in a similar style. Now I do believe most of the original ones had an all brushed case to be able to take a beating, presumably. And also these were watches they were worn to war. The Vario is also brushed on the side and polished on the bezel. Again, I don't know what you intend to do with this watch, but most of these might not see any wars, like I was saying, and it should be able to withstand pretty much anything that you throw at it. Now, speaking of wars, the crowns of the World War II watches were all at the three o'clock, but here we have a crown at the 430. Now I do think this has something to do with the movement used here so bear with me. Now before getting into that and still staying on the screw down crown this gives it a stated water resistance of a hundred meters which ticks another box when it comes to the almighty list of requirements set by the British government when these were issued. Another cool touch that is fully varied here is the addition of a loomed logo on the crown which gives it a modern touch. It modernizes the watch more on it from a visual perspective and it brings the watch into the current century. But apart from that, not much more. I don't think you're ever gonna look, oh, where's my, whoop, I can't see. No, now I know where the crown is. So not much use to it, but cool factor, that's a 10 for me. The fact that the crown is at the 430 is directly tied to the movement and the movement used is directly tied with one of the requirements of having a small seconds subdial at the 6. Now, does all that make sense or you guys are a bit confused because listening back to it, I was, but in order to achieve that, Vario had to find a movement that has a small seconds hand function and to be honest, there aren't that many at this price point that are also reliable, but also don't cheapen the watch so much. The reason why I say cheapen is because Siegel produces a movement with that small seconds hand at the small seconds function at the six, but it's a manual wind. And to me, that's just wouldn't take the reliability box in this case because it's a Siegel. Siegel's good 
It's a different perception when you have it, a movement like that in a watch. So uh, they went with a Myota 82S5, which has the small second function, but it also is an open heart movement. That sort of functionality, the open heart part is clearly covered so it's not so open anymore but in order to achieve that positioning of the small seconds subdial to get it at the six o'clock they had to turn the movement a little bit to adjust it to make it work which again moves the crown at the 430 and bang another requirement check on the movement accuracy is nothing mind-blowing but this runs within the stated tolerances which is a plus 11 seconds per day which is to me is meh territory, but I won't be doing any military related drills or anything military related that requires some sort of measurements and nor I would have any expectations for this to run better than that. So to me, it's perfectly fine for daily use. These movements are usually accused of having a rotor wobble or having a noisy rotor. Now, if you are one of those people that are triggered by the noise or the wobble, which frankly, I think this is a bit silly, be warned. You can hear this occasionally or you can hear the occasion the occasional rotor spin. So stay away from this if you're triggered. Let's move on to the most recognizable parts of the watch that frankly places this in the dirty dozen category. And that is the dial. I mean, it only takes one glance for you to know what you have on your wrist. The sapphire crystal, which is covering it is super crisp. The inner AR coating definitely helps with this. No glare, no nothing. Now, one of the requirements on the famous Dirty Dozen list was to have a shatterproof crystal. Back in those days, the use of sapphire crystal wasn't as common as it is today, so they used acrylic on some of them, according to the internet, or similar materials. So obviously, given the fact that you have better access to better, more modern materials, the usage of sapphire is more than adequate in this case. The dial is almost a carbon copy of the era that it's representing, almost being the right word because we have a textured tarmac-like pattern on the dial, I want to say. And I love it when brands use some sort of texture to a dial, but in a very subtle way, adding more character to what would normally be a very bland, plain black. Added to this, we have the very subtle Vario logo embossed at the 12 that is not in your face, yet it still separates the modern from the old identity and still keeping the roots of the watch still alive. Having a plain dial wouldn't have been bad as it would have stayed faithful to the original, but this again is Vario's own spin without making it in your face Vario, if that makes any sense. Now speaking of personal spin, Vario added a couple of shades of loom, C3 on hands and markers, and on the outer edges and BGW9 on the numerals. Which takes me to my hashtag P loom rating scale. Now I would make those P trips at night quick because this shines bright, but it fades very, very quickly. So in and out, I would say just quick P in and out. Also while peeing, don't plan out any military activities that involve counting seconds because the sub dial at the six is not loomed. So good luck fella. Now, I don't have an official way of measuring the P loom. So in this case, I would give it a P loom score of five out of 10. And I frankly, it's embarrassing the amount of time I actually said P loom, but I'm not gonna edit that out. I'll leave it in. Moving on. Which brings me to the last element of this watch or the last part of this review, which is the strap or in the case, the straps because it came with two. So in the box, the variant that I got had a two piece nylon and a single pass NATO strap or the nylon as Vario likes to call it Cordura, which technically is a heavily woven nylon strap. So in this case, I'll call it nylon. Nevertheless, this is Vario. They do straps first and watches after. So both great quality, quality as you would expect and super soft out of the box. Drilled 18 millimeter lugs for quick strap changes as the quick release spring bars on the straps wouldn't be enough. 18 millimeter lug width is common enough and it should be easy to find strap replacements for these. 
My only gripe here is that the lug holes are too close to the case and the two-piece Cordura was rubbing a bit on the case, but nothing major. So in case you're replacing this, make sure that you get something relatively thin that doesn't catch on the case. So guys, let's draw the line. What are my thoughts? What is my conclusion to this? So to me, let's face it, this is not or won't be the last Dirty Dozen watch produced by a micro brand. Is it the best for the price? I certainly think so. I do think it's difficult to make something as good without having the watch brand history to back it up and also to give it the credibility. The fact that they stayed super faithful to the dirty dozen requirements from back in the day without making a one-to-one -one copy is what I appreciate the most. And this is also what sets it apart from all the other dirty dozens of, see what I did there, of homages uh, or reissues from AliExpress. So that was it for me guys. That was my review for the World War II 1945 dirty dozen release from Vario. Let me know in the comment section down below if you enjoyed the video. What do you think about Vario? What do you think about this amazing feel watch? And also don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel because it really helps. Uh, and also happy new year if you made it so far in the video. Thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you guys in the next video.